Victoria 3 is a ginormous grand strategy game and whether you're new to it or looking for something a little different, in this video we're going to take a look at some of the secret, formable, releasable and crucially playable nations inside of Victoria 3. And as you can see by these culture world overviews, the cultures behind the nations in Victoria 3 unlock a lot of new playability. So let's jump in and take a look at the two methods first of all. The first one is what I like to call nation forming. I've taken that literally from in the game, let me show you. If you navigate to the left hand side of the screen, of course, your menus, and then head to the culture tab, you'll see all of the different cultures inside of these nation states. Crucially though of course it's this tab here, nation formation, that we're looking for in particular. However there's a second way to do it, a little easier, this one I call national release. Instead of building towards something, taking territories, building cultures together to form a nation, here we can look to release some maybe pre-existing ones that are already within our borders. Playing as Russia, for example, I can move to the Release Subject tab under the Diplomacy menu, and there are a whole load of national subjects, cultures, nation states, that I can release and play as individually. And that's of course the focus of this video, both releasing and forming secret and wonderful nations in Vic 3, and we should probably then jump straight in. And here is my first one as Poland. As a releasable state, I can release it as an independent, I can release it as a subject, or I can literally just click that third button and jump straight in and play as Poland. And in this case, I will do just that. Poland takes the first slot in this video, not necessarily because it's the best or worst, but because I think it's one of the best examples of a secret, not so secret, playable nation in Victoria 3. Jump into a game as Russia, release the state of Poland, and here you have it. Three actually, as you can see, pretty good territories. Unlike some of the other additions on this list, we are of course in a difficult starting position, but as you can see, we have access to some fairly decent resources, including of course the fundamental coal that we'll need to industrialize. Poland is a really interesting starter, and I think you'll have great fun with it, but it is absolutely not alone on this list. I've got some spicy additions. Let's now transition into the second one. And here we see South America, and in this case I'd like to pay attention to New Granada or its neighbours who can form Gran Colombia, as you can see here. I'd also like to highlight that on the map we get a nice little visual overlay of the territories green or red that we need to capture in order to form this nation. This one isn't too difficult, and as you can see on the nation formation tab, like any other edition in this list, when we're forming it we'll also get this overview, showing us who our friends or enemies might be in the region and the territories that we should take over if we want to form it. Now in this case it's forming Gran Colombia and this is in my opinion probably the best move that you could make. However even the smaller players inside of Victoria 3 can sometimes present us with both options. We have nation forming or as you see we have releasable nations as well. Now in this case it's Amazonia and Panama perhaps weaker players on the grand scheme of things, but if you're interested in a little bit of a challenge, or perhaps just something a little bit geopolitically different than previous playthroughs, you could also take this option. Whether it's a Gran Colombia or Panama Canal, you'll have it up against you. By the way, as I'm editing this I forgot to say that loads of cool people have subscribed and you should do that too. Okay, bye. A different way to play is over in the east with Great Qing, China. And again there are two fascinating ways we could take it. We could use our release subject method. And as you can see, China has a list of releasable countries so incredibly long. Minor players down the bottom here, Yue, Yunnan, these are of course small nations. Most of them are relative to the great powers that will surround you. However, you could look to release Manchuria, maybe an interesting campaign against Japan and Russia. Uyghurstan also could be an option if you'd like to bump up against some weaker foes, maybe some colonization. Or, of course, Mongolia, right in the middle of the Great Qing and with Russia to the north. This could be a fascinating subject for you to release and play through as well. As an independent state, you could also look to release these nations and not play as them, by the way. Either way, you will have some resources, of course, at your disposal. Your population, though, will be very limited in comparison to your neighbours. An interesting way to play the Great Qing nonetheless, and with some resources available, Mongolia could be a fun playthrough, and it's probably my pick of the lot. Of course, it has a great flag. 
Now, with the fall of the Qing Dynasty, the Qing Dynasty, you could also look to play as a reformed China. Instead of releasing subjects and splitting them up, you could look to play as, say, the People's Republic. I achieved this using a mod, but if you want to go through and change your policies and unite the nation under the communist banner, you can look to do that as well. Speaking of messy unifications, the one that probably takes the crown for the most difficult of all would be over here in Europe. Not difficult necessarily because of all of the hoops that you'll have to jump through being challenging, but just because there are so many hoops. Here you can see the formation of Germany from the Prussian perspective, and it's a big old border. North and South Germany could be federated separately and then merged into one, but take a look at all of the different nations that we'll need to bring under our control. A lot of these are of course minor states, but it's important to note that there are many, many, many different regions here that you'll need to bring in. And so the unification itself can be fairly challenging. Of course you have Prussia, Austria, and other significant players nearby, Russia, France, Great Britain. There are many people to take over, but the formation of either a North, South, or if you can go for it, the German Empire is undoubtedly right up there with the Americas in terms of in-game, event, history and playability for some of these formable nations. The releasable ones of course take a different flair, they're less based around events and history and more around just you starting a game and breaking off a state. Returning to the Russian bear, we have a spicy one. One of my two spiciest of all. So let's take a look at the Baltic region, where as you can see, if you're playing as Russia, you can release Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania, and they are looking pretty in pink, I must say. You could play as any of these nations. They are now released independent playable states. Fantastic. Are they powerful? Uh, like a lot of the other released nations on this list, probably not. But... There's more where that came from, because we can also form them, Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, into a united Baltic state. Now, to do this, you don't have to release them independently like I did with Russia, right? We could instead maybe release one and fight our way across to take the territory. Maybe we want to do it as the Russians or the Prussians outright, because Prussia controls a little bit of this land too. But either way, a really interesting and unique nation to form but perhaps not quite as unique as the next entry on my list. And this one with a little bit of personal bias, of course, brings me great joy. Welcome to Aotearoa, New Zealand, perhaps. Here you can see the Aotearoa Empire can be formed by playing as one of the Maori cultures. And it's important to note that this one will be a little difficult. You have the United Tribes and the North Island is really your only viable option out of the three. The others looking to be colonized probably any day now. This is made a little bit more difficult by the fact that you are also sharing part of New Zealand with New South Wales, with Australia. It's a really fascinating one because you can play as an independent Maori empire, but there are some difficult politics at play. And it's largely thanks to this, New South Wales, which brings me nicely, actually, what a segue, into the next edition on my list. It's New Zealand's uglier cousin across the ditch, Australia, or New South Wales in particular. Sorry, friends. Here we're playing as New South Wales because they control a piece of New Zealand. But, as you can see, there's a new New Zealand to form. This time, the Principality of New Zealand. And with a unique, another new flag. As you can see, this time, it takes a different stance. It's not the Aotearoa Empire, the Māori Empire of New Zealand, but instead a colonial piece. You could look to take it even further, of course, and form the Kingdom of Australia. This will see you uniting New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland, the Northern Territory, Tasmania, and New Zealand into one odd kingdom. Of course, here you're sharing the land with the Aboriginals. So again, there is a cultural and geopolitical conflict at play. I thought that this region was particularly interesting. Of course, my personal bias being in New Zealand, but, but moreover, the whole load of different ways that you can form a New Zealand, given it's such a tiny little country, I think goes to highlight the whole entire point of this video, whether it's nation releasing or nation forming. There are loads of different ways we could play it, and it is perhaps stressed at its best when I turn to Great Britain up here in the north. Great Britain, of course, the kingpin out of all of the New Zealand's, Australia's colonial empires that sit underneath Victoria. And while we can't form a lot of nations, as you can see, we can release a whole load of them. 
the obvious ones, perhaps the most playable out of any that we've released on the list so far in this video. Wales, Scotland and Ireland. We can break apart the United Kingdom and separate it into its individual pieces. Or of course you could head over to Central America where if you're not releasing Cuba as Spain, you might look to the Bahamas, Jamaica, Guatemala. There are a load of options to unpack. But probably one of the most powerful and interesting releasable nations we've actually yet to cover. And to do that, we're going to return to the Russian bear in the north with its wonderful list of releasable subjects. We started with Poland and we're going to end with Ukraine. Of course, geopolitical context at the moment means it would be a little unfair to not mention it on the list. But actually, the real reason why I use the word unfair to not mention it is because this is a powerhouse. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below, I'm sure you will, but I believe that this is the most significant, most powerful nation that you can release from the beginning of the game. We have a large army, barracks and conscription centers alike, but we're also the bread basket of Europe. And it's not an empty breadbasket either, because right from the word go, unlike a lot of the other releasable powers, of course the formable ones being completely different, we have a good economy behind us in most ways that we could look at it anyway. Our access to resources is great too, logging camps, iron, fishing, of course crucially coal for our industrialization, and wheat and food as far as the eye can see in our breadbasket territories. Ukraine is one of the best releasable nations to play in Victoria 3, and I'm fairly confident on that one. I think you'll have a great successful playthrough, although you do still have major geopolitical powers around you, so take care. And with that sage advice that brings us to the end of the video, whether you discovered this cultural map for the first time, or maybe you're a more advanced player looking for something different, a new challenge or a new state to release or form, hopefully you've learned something new in this one and maybe had a bit of fun along the way. I had a lot of fun making it. The only thing is, there are so many more to cover. I mean, I didn't even get a chance to delve into the United States of America itself which has its own set of in-game history, events, and all kinds of fun stuff. So, I guess this is a call to action, and a shameless one at that. <laughs> Let me know below if there are nations, or subjects, or whatever that I haven't played as, that I should look at. I think that there could very well be maybe two or three more parts to this. There are, as you can see, plenty of other cultures, nations, and states to unpack. Thank you so much for joining me today. Happy New Year, by the way. If you're watching this around the time of release, I'm back. I'm ready to make more content, and I'll see you next time.